I've been doing a few videos on reactive coding with RxJS and Angular recently. I'll link to those in the description if you want to check some of them out. But the key idea is generally that we have an observable stream and then we use the async pipe in the template to pull data out of that stream to display it. And you can see that's what we are doing in this example as well. And so one of the key ideas of programming reactively with RxJS is that we want to avoid manually subscribing. That is, we don't want to have an observable stream and call dot subscribe on it to get that data out. So we've been looking at various implementations of coding reactively, but in the last video, I got this comment. Now pagination creates a bit of a trickier situation because we aren't just grabbing a stream and using the async pipe to pull data out of it. We need to modify the data in that stream based on input from the user. Specifically in this case, we need the data to be based on the currently selected page. So how do we change the data in the stream based on user input without having to manually subscribe? So this is what we are looking at now. When coding reactively, I like to consider what it is exactly that I am reacting to. So for this example, I want to react to the page changing. And since that is what I'm reacting to, I'm going to need a stream of that page. So I need a stream that's going to emit one, two, three, and so on. So that is why we are setting up a behavior subject. And if you aren't familiar with a behavior subject, I'll link to more info on that. But basically it is an observable stream with additional properties, two of which are useful to us in this scenario. We can get its current value without needing to subscribe to it. And we can cause it to emit new values on the stream by calling its next method. And you can see that we're doing that down here. So what we do is we set up this stream with a default value of one because that's our first page. And then when the user clicks on the next or previous buttons, it's going to trigger these methods. And if we're going to the next page, we get the current value of current page and add one. And for previous page, we take one first checking that we aren't already on the first page. And that's going to trigger a new data emission on this stream with whatever the new current page is. Now, obviously the logic here is like a super bare bones pagination implementation. Uh, you could do uh, different types of logic here, but the key focus is the reactive approach. You can extend this however you need for your specific situation. So we have our stream that emits the current page number now, but what we actually need is the data for that specific page. So now what we're going to need to do is mix some streams together to get the final data that we need. And when coding this way, I like to think of this like a recipe, like I'm cooking a meal. So first I think about what I am actually cooking here. And that is that I want to display something in the template. And in this case, that is some paginated data. I want the data specific to one specific page. So that is my end result, the dish I'm cooking. Now the ingredients for this dish are the streams I need to make that happen. So in this case, I'm going to need two streams. I'll need that stream of the page number so that I know what page data to use. And I'm also going to need the actual page data itself, the things that are going to be on that page. So I'm going to need a stream that includes that data as well. And then we have the method for the dish, how we bring all the ingredients together. And that is going to be how we use the RxJS operators to combine those streams to get our final result. And this is what I am doing here. So you can see I'm creating our final product here, the current page data stream. That's what is going to contain our paginated data, just the data for one page. And I am creating that by mixing some streams together with RxJS operators. So what we're doing here is we're starting with that page number, just the one, two or three or whatever is being emitted on this stream. And every time we get a page number being emitted, we are using the pipe method to modify that stream. And in this case, the operator we are using is the switch map operator. So what this is going to allow us to do is take the value from that stream. So one, two or three or whatever, and then we can return a new observable stream instead. So then this observable stream will become whatever this returns. And in this case, I am calling get passenger data using that current page. And this is just going to go off to this service here. And we're just making an HTTP request to this just demo uh, API. 
So this is going to return us an observable stream of the result for this request. And you can see here, I'm embedding the page number into the API request. Now that is the key part. That is essentially how we have mixed together those streams and created our final result. But we do also have this additional map operator on the end. This is just because the specific data that this API returns has a data property that is an array of the data we want. So all I'm doing is just rather than returning all of the data, I'm saying I just want that data array. And this works well for this specific situation, but there are a lot of RxJS operators and a lot of different ways you could combine streams. So this is just one example, but the key idea is mixing those streams together to get your end result. And the end result of this process will always be some final observable. So once we have this uh, final observable stream created, we just pass that uh, into our template and we subscribe to it with the async pipe and then we are just displaying the data. And the other stuff going on here is some stuff I've covered in the previous videos, but I've also basically just got this else loading here, which is going to trigger this template if the observable stream hasn't emitted data yet. So basically we're just going to display this if, uh, if it's still loading. So if I refresh the page, you can see we get that little loading animation. So now if I click on the next and previous buttons, we can see the page data changing. Uh, for whatever reason, Pedro and Leonardo are the only people who fly on this airline, but we can see that the data is changing. And now I've intentionally left things like loading states or animations for the data off for this tutorial to keep things focused on just the actual pagination. But handling loading states is also something very possible with this reactive approach. So if we wanted to say, uh, display some spinner or some kind of animation when I click next, because you can see there is a slight delay between clicking next and the actual data loading in, that is certainly something that we could do. So I'll link to another video in the description where I specifically cover reacting to loading states like this to uh, display an animation. Okay, that's it for this video. If you liked it, it'd be great if you could leave a like or subscribe. It really helps the channel out. If there are any other situations you would like to see me cover reactively, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments and I will see you in the next video.